A very powerful 6.9 earthquake striking Australia. What is going on in the world? It's as if the birth pangs of the soon coming return of Jesus Christ are upon us. They are. We're going to get into all the details of this quake and much more in just a second, guys. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, or the glasses because I'm blind. Also, guys, if you are able to make a generous donation to my ministry to help support, I would greatly appreciate that. I am demonetized on YT. They don't support me. But if you guys enjoy my daily content, talk about end time Bible prophecy headlines, you can help me out on PayPal, that link down below, or you could sign up on the Patreon. Now, when you do that, you are going to get access for all the links for these YT videos. So you're going to get alerted. Unlike, you know, YouTube itself, which hardly sends out any alerts on these videos anymore. You sign up on Patreon. It helps the ministry. Plus, you will get alerted every time the new content comes out. You could also send me direct messages and... Don't forget, I'm also on Rumble. These videos will go up there as well as kind of a backup as well in case they get the boot off of YT. But some people prefer going over to Rumble instead of YT anyway. So just check it out. Give me a sub. All the links are down below. A big thank you to everybody who's already supporting. And for those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So the USGS today reporting a 6.9 magnitude earthquake just off the coast of Australia. Now, this was originally upgraded. At the time it was reported, it was just a 6.7. They went ahead and upgraded that to a 6.9. And you know, a lot of times with these quakes, especially since I've seen it, since I've been reporting on them over the last five and a half years, they start off stronger, reported initially, but then they, you know, get, you know, they get knocked down a couple pegs after that. This was different. This one was actually bumped up, although it was just a couple, still significant. Also, this was a very shallow quake coming in at a depth of just six miles. And when you start to really get in understanding the depth of earthquakes and how it works in relation to, you know, who feels the shaking, the damage, all of that, the more shallow the quake, the higher chances are you are of not only experiencing damage uh, or, you know, with a quake this large, extensive damage, injuries, or even, you know, casualties, unfortunately, uh, that's possible. Uh, but the deeper the quake is, the less likely you are to have, you know, catastrophic damage, uh, or in some cases, some people won't even feel the shaking. Of course, this is with the smaller magnitudes. Uh, in the case here, with this one being such a shallow quake, uh, it hit off the coast of Australia um, in and around New Caledonia. Now, amazingly, and I said that I didn't think there'd really be any way that there couldn't have been some sort of damage from this, Amazingly, nothing reported. Now, as of yet, this happened, you know, just a little while ago at the time that I'm recording this. But one thing we can let everybody know is that no tsunami warning has been issued for Australia uh, and also New Caledonia. So that is very good news. However, many people reported to have felt the shaking uh, all over Australia, buildings swaying, people figuring out what the heck is going on. Uh, but right now, nothing being reported as far as damage. I can't say that's going to stay that way because, again, uh, with the news just coming out, we're hoping it does, in fact, stay that way and that, you know, we dodged a huge bullet here. I also look at the region where this took place. And although, yes, in and around Australia, New Caledonia, uh, this is not a, a you know, a, a new place for earthquakes to develop. They're not a stranger to earthquakes. But in light of recent events that have taken place there over the last couple of years with all the restrictions in Australia, the rise of tyranny, authoritarianism that we have seen put upon these people, you know, I am not surprised that a quake this large, this magnitude would hit in this area. And again, we are very happy. No injuries, no casualties to report. But God is really, I believe, trying to waken people up to his soon coming return he said this would take place in the last days. We would see these earthquakes in diverse places, the shaking that's going on, getting people's attention. Sometimes we're not so lucky. We don't always get to dodge these, you know, these big quakes like this and escape with no damage or injuries. Sometimes God just sends them as a warning. But then you could get another one to follow uh, that could inflict some damage. Let's hope that's not the case, although... They are letting people know within Australia and New Caledonia to be on the lookout for potentially more aftershocks to take place from this 6.9 that we just had earlier uh, today. It's something that we will continue to monitor as we go along here in the days ahead. And again, as I always say, 
Jesus is coming back soon. We don't know the day or the hour, but we can see that day approaching. And another thing that we always do here on these videos is we give people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior because I can't assume everybody that watches these videos is saved or they're born again. And if that's you, if you've not yet accepted Christ, you see what's happening around you right now and you're like, this is like the days of revelation are playing out because I've heard it. Well, today's the day of salvation for you. I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to accept Christ. This is a prayer you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. Here's the first thing you need to do right off the top. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But let me tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from that sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.